Hi everyone, I'm Celeste. Welcome to my booktube channel. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, it's New Year's Eve, um, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever holiday you've been celebrating. Um, I wish the best to you. It's been an interesting 2023 and promises to be an even more interesting 2024. And this year I decided to do a sort of whimsical gift bag to give to people for books. Um, and this was inspired by the designer and artisan Mackenzie Childs. And for those of you who don't know, Mackenzie Childs is a potterer who lives south of where I live in Aurora, New York, and does all kinds of fanciful designs with bright colors interspersed with harlequin diamonds and so forth, plaids, black and white plaids. And so I did some gift bags that were sort of inspired by that. Now these are not my own designs. I will link the channel down below where I got this project idea. So what I'm doing is a project share. And so I did make two uh, bags this year. This one has no tissue in it, this one does. But as you can see, they're made with two different types of um, paper and the handles are really fun. If you can see up close here, um, those were done with this garland, which I found at um, the craft store. And so I used this to make some unusual gift bag handles. So I thought that was kind of fun with the holly berries. Um, and then I just wanted to go through a number of books I've been reading over the Christmas season. Now, uh, some of them are adult books and then the others are all for children. I'm just going to quickly go through some of them and then save some special ones for the end, which is actually a trilogy of children's books, which are near and dear to my heart and which I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. So the first is Frost at Christmas, a D.I. Jack Frost investigation by R.D. Wingfield. And this is the very first Inspector Frost mystery that I've read. Um, it's very amusing. It's very entertaining. Um, it's gritty. Um, I'll read you a little bit from the back cover here so you get the premise. Ten days to Christmas and Tracy Uphill, aged eight, hasn't come home from Sunday school. Her mother, a young prostitute, is desperate. Enter Detective Inspector Jack Frost, sloppy, scruffy, and insubordinate. To help him investigate the case of the missing child, he's been assigned a new sidekick, the chief, chief constable's nephew. And so um, this takes place in a little provincial area in England called Denton and uh, Frost is quite gruff and off the cuff and inappropriate at times, um, a little bit sloppy in his dress, a little bit uh, rude, um, but also very funny. Um, so would I recommend this? Yeah, if you're looking for a sort of gritty, old-fashioned police procedural that has some humorous elements to it but is also kind of dark at the same time. Um, do I like Frost? No. Well, you know, he's okay. He's certainly able to uh, solve the crime. But um, yeah, I would recommend it. Would I read another one? Probably. I'll read one more um, to see if I like that one any better. Um, but it was okay. You know, it was enjoyable. So yeah, Frost at Christmas. And then the next one that I wanted to share with you is kind of a nice collection to have by your bedside table during the festive season. And that is American Christmas Stories. And this is from the Library of America. And the Library of America has many, many wonderful books available. Um, and this collection is a bit different. It's not all of the typical 
um, Christmas stories that we see over and over again in so many collections, you know, which are classics and wonderful, but this is kind of different. So I'll read you some of the authors that are in this collection. Shirley Jackson, Amy Tan, Edna Ferber, Sandra Cisneros, Mark Twain, Jack London, Catherine Ann Porter, Louisa May Alcott, Dorothy Parker, W.E.B. Du Bois, Anne Petrie, Grace Paley, Ray Bradbury, uh, Nalo Hopkinson, uh, Jose Nieto, John Updike, and many others. Um, and a science fiction writer, Connie Willis, is actually the editor of this collection. And I think of all of the stories in here, that my favorite was probably the one by Grace Paley. If you've never read any of Grace Paley's holiday stories, they're really interesting because they're often told from an autobiographical perspective um, or thinly veiled autobiography with a little girl as the protagonist. Uh, growing up often in New York, um, and during her school days where she is um, celebrating Hanukkah at home uh, and keeping those traditions. And then at school, of course, it's the commercial Christmas holiday. And, um, you know, her characters are asked to take part in Christmas pageants and so on. And then meanwhile at home, they're honoring Hanukkah. So it's a really interesting kind of uh, dual perspective. And the stories are very funny. Um, so I would say I like Grace Paley's the best. Some of these were hits and some were misses for me uh, because they're so off the beaten path that there's probably a reason they were off the beaten path. Um, they're not the best of the best, but um, they offer interesting alternative perspectives to the holiday season, you know, like from a science fiction angle, Ed McBain is in here and he offers one um, that's a bit of a um, uh, investigative one, I would say, Joan Didion. And these aren't all fiction either. There are some essay fragments in here as well. So if you collect Christmas stories and you're looking for something different, um, I would recommend American Christmas Stories. So the next book I wanted to share with you that I enjoyed and reread this holiday season is a scholastic book. And recently I did uh, start a series on scholastic books that I remember from my childhood. And this is also a favorite and it is The House Without a Christmas Tree by Gail Rock. Now, some of you who are old enough may remember the Christmas special the House Without a Christmas Tree that was on every year in the 1970s. I think this was in 1972 that it first came out. And it was like a Hallmark Hall of Fame made for TV, um, I would say movie, but it was actually more like videotape that it was on. It was done with a very low budget. Um, and it was almost like a play being acted out on a stage. Uh, but it was on TV and it starred Jason Robards and um, uh, the grandmother was played by Mildred Natwick and um, it's the story of a little girl named Addie Mills and Addie lives in Clear River, Nebraska with her father who is widowed and the grandmother and they live in a little house. They don't have an awful lot of money. Um, Addie is kind of a precocious, very bright, inquisitive schoolgirl. And um, in the, the TV special, she always had these uh, braids and these big glasses that she wore. Um, the year is 1946 and it takes place around the holidays. And her father is, I would consider him to be like a morose character. He's not very fun to be with. He's very somber all the time. He kind of rejects Addie. I think he loves her, but he kind of um, stays away from her and doesn't, doesn't engage with her, doesn't interact very much. And um, she 
has a contest going on at school and wins a Christmas tree, but her father forbids her from bringing it home. She tries to bring it home and he won't let her set it up and she can't figure out why he would be that way, that he wouldn't allow them to have a Christmas tree. So she takes the Christmas tree down to a poor uh, schoolmate's house and gives it to her. As the story unfolds, you learn why the father is this way, why he treats Addie the way he does, why he doesn't want a Christmas tree in the house, and um, the story goes on from there. But I remember finding it very compelling at the time, very well acted. You can probably still find it, not very good quality, but you could probably still find it here on YouTube if you searched for the house without a Christmas tree. Um, and it was nothing like we have today with cable and 4K and binge watching and all of that. This is definitely a um, um, inexpensive videotaped uh, play on TV. Um, and I think this scholastic book, yeah, an Addie Mills story from the television special, and there she is with the tree. Um, so I think this is sort of a novelization that actually came out after the TV show. So yeah, um, The House Without a Christmas Tree is a really special one to read. I, I do recommend that. And then I also wanted to share just some little tiny sort of stocking stuffer books that um, my son and I have both been enjoying this holiday. One of my absolute favorites is a classic, The Tailor of Gloucester, and that is of course by Beatrix Potter. It is, I think, probably my favorite of the Beatrix Potter stories. And um, this is just a, a charming, charming story. You know I love fashion, and I love fashion details and textiles and descriptions of embroidery and so on. And if you look at the very first sentence of the story, it sort of sets the tone for what's to come. In the time of swords and periwigs and full-skirted coats with flowered lappets, when gentlemen wore ruffles and gold-laced waistcoats of paduasoy and taffeta, I think it's paduasoy, there lived a tailor in Gloucester. Isn't that so much better than once upon a time there lived a tailor in Gloucester? I mean, Beatrix Potter is just sort of setting it up with all the wonderful lush descriptions of embroidery and fabric and taffeta. So it's just a, a favorite of mine and how the little mice help uh, save the day when the tailor of Gloucester falls ill on Christmas Eve. Um, so it's a, a tale of friendship and helping each other out and saving the day. Um, and then Another one, of course, that we enjoy is uh, Brambley Hedge. This is Winter Story. You can't go wrong. I don't think I like Brambley Hedge quite as much as I like the Beatrix Potter books, but they're very much in the same vein. Uh, very cozy and some lovely illustrations in here. Um, one of my favorite characters is Mrs. Apple. And of course, there are, you know, sort of homey scenes in their little domicile there by a big roaring fire with all of the cabinets of marvelous preserves and food. So that's of course a favorite. And then last year I had shared a uh, book by the poet Carol Ann Duffy. I have several of her books. Um, the one from last year was Dorothy Wordsworth's um, Christmas, I believe, is what it's called. This one by Carol Ann Duffy is Frost Fair. This is such a great stocking stuffer. Let me just share that with you. And this is just a little poem about um, what are known as frost fairs. And that was in the great winter of 1683. We follow our narrator as she explores the town on the Thames, a thousand tents and dancing fires lit on the frozen water. 
Um, and so she encounters jugglers and dancers and, you know, sort of magical uh, people in impossible situations and larger than life characters um, as she visits the Frost Fair on the Thames in the 1600s. It's just lovely. Um, and it's illustrated by David de la Harris, I want to say is the, how you pronounce that. Um, but I highly recommend any of Carol Ann Duffy's books and her poetry. And then I also enjoyed reading some tales from A Scandinavian Christmas. And this is Festive Tales for a Nordic Noel. This is uh, all foiled on the front, so it's not really doing it justice, but all of these colors sort of light up when you uh, reflect them. And um, so there are some classics in here. Um, Selma Lagerlof, Hans Christian Andersen, one of my favorites of all time. Um, and modern day stories from Karl of Nosgaard and Vigdis Hjorth. Um, and so they're just like little fragments of folk tales, fairy tales. My favorite, of course, is The Little Match Girl, which is just wonderful. Uh, but I also enjoyed one called The Forest Witch. And um, so these are just little snippets of stories. This would be another great one to have at your bedside table for the festive season. Okay, so finally, I'd like to share a very special trilogy, which is near and dear to my heart. And it's a set of books I remember reading as a little girl and wanted to share them with you. And if you're a fan of gardening, if you're a fan of um, books about little girls coming of age who grew up in um, old time America, then this series of books is probably for you. The first book in the series is The Golden Name Day, and this is by Jenny Dorothea Lindquist. I love this series almost as much as the Laura Ingalls Wilder books. I would say the Laura Ingalls Wilder books are a little more mature, while these books are definitely for younger readers, but so good. The series takes place in a small town in New Hampshire, um, somewhere between 1900 and 1910. Teddy Roosevelt is the president, and um, horses and buggies are the main form of transportation along with the train. Um, they have telephones and telegraphs. So um, the first book, The Golden Name Day, begins in the spring, and it is a very seasonal read. So if you're looking for a great vintage cozy book to read in the springtime, this would be a lovely one. Um, so it begins in April. A little girl named Nancy Bruce arrives. She's a city girl and she comes to stay with her adopted grandparents in the country. Um, they're not her real grandparents, but they were friends of her mother's growing up back in Sweden. And so um, they're family friends. And Nancy is coming to stay with them because her mother has been ill. I don't think they tell you what she's been ill with, but she had to go away to a hospital to recuperate for a year. And so Nancy is going to be spending the year in the country with her adoptive grandma and grandpa. And um, so Nancy, of course, is scared and lonely and homesick, but um, the grandparents, along with aunts and cousins, make it just such a wonderful, memorable stay for Nancy. And the first book carries you through Nancy's first half year in the countryside, spring into summer. And so um, the premise of uh, the title, The Golden Name Day, is because um, Apparently, um, in Sweden, they have special name days, and when your name day comes up, you celebrate it, much like you would have a birthday celebration. Um, and um, Nancy is saddened by the fact that her name is not in the name day book, but this is the story of how they sort of get around that and give Nancy um, a solution to her problem. 
Um, the thing I love the most about this, you know, there's a quote, the beauty of life is found in the smallest, most ordinary moments. And these books by Jenny Dorothea Lindquist celebrate that um, to a T. This brings back the days when an adventure could be made out of anything and going outside, you would use your imagination and play. There are just so many lovely things in here. There's crafts, there's gardening, um, it's full of crafts and baking. Um, they go um, berry picking and then they make jams and honey and um, they're always arranging flowers and making clothes for their dolls. There's a very magical scene in one of the um, books where um, uh, Nancy is given a very special sort of fairy tale book and she goes to read it on the landing of her grandparents house and the way the light is canted through the window and shines on the pages of the book it um, colors it and it makes it like stained glass and so she thinks that's magic and so every time she goes to read that particular book she'll only read it on the landing um, and those continue in the second Second book which is just as special and this is my copy of this book it's called the little silver house and I should say that the illustrations for these books I had mentioned Laura Ingalls Wilder the illustrations for these books are also done by Garth Williams and it's a lovely companion if you love the Laura Ingalls Wilder books this is sort of New England at the turn of the century and similar in in several ways um, here's the lovely cover of that book and there's the little silver house and um, so this continues the seasonal story taking you through fall and winter where Nancy is staying with grandma and grandpa and in this one um, their everyday adventures continue um, they discover this little silver house that is all boarded up and nobody lives in and no one knows what's happened to it or why nobody lives there and um, so there's a mystery surrounding that and there's all kinds of other events that take place they talk about Thanksgiving they talk talk about uh, you know reading books on Christmas Eve and in fact in my last video where I was talking about a uh, Scandinavian custom of um, feeding birds on Christmas Day they actually do that in this book um, just so many examples um, they go um, uh, birch bark hunting and um, they're taking little bits of birch bark so that the girls can make wooden whisks for their grandmother to use in the kitchen when she's um, cooking and baking. Um, so just all kinds of old handicrafts and things like that. It's a really magical special book. And the final book in the series is The Crystal Tree. That is the only book that I have not read. Um, the Crystal Tree takes place the following January, um, and I believe it's when Nancy turns 10. So she's been with Grandma and Grandpa for a full year. And so, um, yeah, I'm really looking to get a copy of that. These books are very hard to get a hold of uh, hardcover editions of for a decent price. They're very expensive and um, they did do um, reprints of them in paperback form so you can probably find those but if you're looking for these hardcover originals they're a little bit harder to find and some of them I saw for actually like $150 up to about $300. I don't know why. Um, and the author Jenny Lindquist is uh, special herself. She devoted herself to children's literature. She was actually the editor of the Horn Book, which was a, about children's literature, for years and years. She also lived in New York State, where I live, and she was a librarian, I want to say in Albany. Um, so she was involved with children's literature and children and writing about children for her entire life. 
And um, so, yeah, if you're looking for a really special seasonal trilogy and you love Laura Ingalls Wilder, you love uh, the Betsy Tacey books, I would definitely give these two a try. And I'm looking forward to tracking down a copy of The Crystal Tree and reading that one as well. It's the only one I haven't read. That's all I have for today. I hope you guys are well. Um, I'm not really making a lot of resolutions for 2024 in terms of what I'm going to be reading or anything like that. Um, you know, I'm just going to sort of take it easy and take things slow, uh, read according to my mood. I don't know how many, um, you know, tags and prompts I'm going to participate in this year. I feel like sometimes I put in a lot of effort to do that and to curate a list of books to read and I make sure I participate in friends discussions and things like that but I'm um, questioning how many of those I want to invest my time and energy in this year. Um, I am very very excited to participate in some and I do have a list with about a zillion books on it for my TBR already for 2024. So um, yeah, so um, thank you for being with me in 2023. I wish you all well, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.